பார்த்தீங்களா யா ஆல் ரைட் ஸோ குட் ஈவினிங் சில்ட்ரன் ஸோ அகெயின் இன்னும் மீட்டிங் யூ டுடே ஸோ எக்ஸாம்ஸ் ஆர் நியரிங் அண்ட் ஆப்வியஸ்லி ப்ரிப்ரேஷன்ஸ் ஆர் கோயிங் ஆன் ஸோ ரொம்ப டென்ஷன் எடுத்துக்காதீங்க சார் சொன்ன மாதிரி கீப் கூல் ஓகே திங்ஸ் வில் பி அட் பிளேஸ் ஆல் ரைட் ஸோ யா ஸோ டுடே வில் அகெயின் கவர் டிஃப்ரெண்ட் ஆஸ்பெக்ட்ஸ் ஆஃப் கொஷின்ஸ் இன் ஒரு பேப்பர் ஐ ஹவ் ஜஸ்ட் ரேண்டம்லி ஃபுல் ஸோ மூவிங் ஆன் ஸோ இன்றைக்கி வந்து அனடேட்டிங் டூல் இஸ் மைண்ட் இஸ் ஒர்க்கிங் ஃபைன் ஸோ ஜஸ்ட் சொல்லுங்கள் ஐ வில் ட்ரை டு ரைட் ஆன் த ஸ்க்ரீன் வெதர் யூஆர் ஏபிள் டு சி இட் just go back to my file yeah question number 90 vandha nama panna porom first so from there is where it starts the physics part okay so uh, what i'm annotating you're able to see it this is not working Yes, you are able to see? Yes, sir. Yeah, so question number 91, first question. So we will see it. Yes, now only I am annotating. Yeah, now it is coming on the screen. Sherry. All right, so moving on. Okay. A short electric dipole has a dipole moment of, so the value of 16 to 10 power minus 16 of dinner. The electric potential due to the dipole at a point of 6 meters from the center of the dipole. Situated on a line making an angle of 60 degrees, with the axis of the dipole is so idhuk vandha first you draw the diagram they have given you the dipole so you know what is dipole charges which are equal in magnitude having opposite signs separated by a finite distance illiya adha than dipole so inga it is making an angle of 60 theta kuduttaanga 60 appadina okay so you will have to try find out what is the electric potential So, what formula do we use? What do we solve? B is equal to K into 2P by R cube. Okay. So, is it axial line or equatorial line? Axial. Oh. So? So? <coughs> எலக்ட்ரிக் பொட்டென்ஷியல் ஃபார்மில் தான் யூஸ் பண்ணணும் கேபி பை ஆர் கியூப் இங்கே வராது அது வந்து நீங்கள் சொல்கிறது நான் எலக்ட்ரிக் ஃபீல்டுக்கு சொல்கிறீங்கன்னு நான் நினைக்கிறேன் ஸோ ஹியர் இட் இஸ் எலக்ட்ரிக் பொட்டென்ஷியல் எலக்ட்ரிக் பொட்டென்ஷியல் விச் இஸ் மேக்கிங் அன் ஆங்கிள் ஆஃப் தீட்டா வித் ரெஸ்பெக்ட் டு அ டைப்போல் இஸ் கிவன் பை தி ஃபார்முலா பி இஸ் ஈக்குவல் டு இங்கே மேலே எழுதுகிறேன் பி இஸ் ஈக்குவல் டு கேபி கேபி காஸ் தீட்டா எஸ் காஸ் தீட்டா பை ஆர் ஸ்கொயர் வரும் இந்த ஃபார்முலா நீங்கள் யூஸ் பண்ணணும் ஸோ ஓகேங்களா So, come on, try it. Use this formula. Theta is 60. K direct. K is 9 into 10 power 9. Already given in the question. So, P is also there. Dipole moment is also specified in the question. Sir? Ah. Fourth option, sir. Ah. Um, ஒரு <laughs> you get the answer as 200 volt great okay moving on to the next question okay next question number 92 question number 92 you can see here a series lcr circuit 
that is inductive capacitance and a resistance circuit connected to a AC voltage source. When inductance is removed from the circuit, the phase difference between current and voltage is pi by 3. So, and the mind detector disconnect panambodh, after you disconnect it, what's happening? The phase difference is between current and voltage is pi by 3 in Kurutrakaga. Aparong, if capacitor is removed from the circuit, the phase difference is again pi by 3. That means even post removing capacitance, it is still pi by 3 between current and voltage. So, if a question and an pathingana, what is the power factor of the circuit? You might find out what is the power. Sir, I have a doubt. Sir. Yes, yes. Sir, is RLC and LCR is... Both uh, are same, both are same. <laughs> okay. okay, the way they, you know, uh, represent or the way they denote in some questions may be different. Both are one and the same. All right. Yeah. So, this is the question. So, first thing they're telling when L is removed. So, when L is removed, it is as, as good as, it, as a RC circuit, a resistance and a capacitor circuit. So, for an RC circuit, they have given you the phase angle as pi by 3. So, can't you calculate what would be the uh, um, capacitive reactance of that circuit, of an RC circuit? Because you have the angle, the phase difference. Come on, do it. Sir, option number one, sir. One point. Option, option number one, okay. Correct, but if you are good. So, you are doing Option one is perfect. Correct, da. So, first one, you would have calculated what is the phase angle for an RC circuit. That is when L is removed. That is the first question. So, when IL is removed, that is inductor has been disconnected. So, what happens for your phase? The phase angle is pi by 3. It is already specified in the question. Is not it? So, what formula will we use in? So, tan of pi by 3 is equal to Excellent. Yeah. Xt upon r. Xt by r. Yeah, Xt upon r. So, yes. what is tan? What is tan pi by three? That is tan sixty. Root three, isn't it? Root three. Correct. So you will get the equation as x is equal to root three times r. So you build the relationship like that. So capacitive reactance can't be put Same way, the next situation is second case is they are removing the capacitor. So capacitor is removed, it becomes an RL circuit. RLC, you remove that C. So it becomes an RL. So for an RL circuit, what happens? Again, they have given you the phase angle. Same way, you will find out tan uh, pi by 3. So tan pi by 3 this time will be XL by R. That's the only difference. So as C is removed. Okay. So what is uh, XL now? Again, don't you think you get root 3R? Root 3R. Okay, again you get root 3R. So, we have found out capacitive and inductive reactances in terms of R. Okay, simple. Then, so you find out what is the power factor of the corresponding circuit. So, you know the formula for power factor. What is the formula for power factor? Cos phi equal to R by Z. Hmm. Cos phi is going to be equal to R by Z. So, here... You also have a relationship which says says that tan phi for that impedance triangle when you draw for an RLC circuit. So, tan phi is equal to? XL minus XC divided by R. Correct. XL minus XC divided by R. So, you get a relationship like this. So once you get a relationship like this, when I go for substituting the values of XL and XC, both would cancel out and ultimately I am going to get 0. Right? So, it is going to be 0. So, the value is going to be 0 in that case. So, sin phi upon cos phi itself is going to be 0. So, so I can easily say that phi is equal to 0. And hence, for what value of phi, cos phi, the angle is going to be 0. If you are going to see, then it is going to be 
1, isn't it? How many, I mean, cos 0. So, cos phi is going to be equal to 1. It has to be equal to 1. That's the reason you get the answer as the power factor as 1 for this particular question. So, first one is the answer. Alright. So, we'll move on. That's how you approach this question. So, find out xc, find out xl and then substitute in the formula and get your relationship for power factor in terms of cost. So, that's the reason I'm converting in terms of cost and then representing the final answer. Okay. Next question. Question number 93. Light of frequency 1.5 times the threshold frequency is incident on photosensitive metal or a material. What will be the photoelectric current if frequency is halved and intensity is doubled? Sir, photoelectric so, current is zero, sir. Photoelectric current becomes zero. Why does it become zero? N is the number emitted. Hmm. When frequency is getting halved, then its original value. So we can write it as 1.5 times threshold frequency. So new naught, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yeah. So then what's going to happen? Will there be any uh, photoelectric effect that can be t that can take place? When you say threshold frequency itself is being, um, you know, Halved. What is threshold frequency in the first place? 1.5 times. No, no, no. What is meaning of threshold frequency? The minimum frequency for which photoelectric effect is observed, right? For ejection of photoelectrons, you need to have a minimum frequency, a bare minimum frequency which is called as threshold frequency. When you're going to reduce that itself, can you expect photoelectric effect to take place? No, sir. No, you cannot have photoelectric effect at all. Why? Because the photoelectron cannot eject because you are not, your, your threshold frequency itself is being reduced. When your frequency itself is being halved, basically. So that's the reason there is no photoelectric phenomenon observed. There is no photoelectric phenomenon. Where would you have photo, you know, electric current? Obviously, photoelectric current also would not be there. Are you getting it? So, what would be the answer in this case? Zero. Directly, you can approach. It's going to be zero. Okay. So, therefore, the photoelectric current is going to be zero. Okay. Next question number 94, dimensions of stress. I think this you know how to do it. What's the formula for stress, by the way? Force by area. Correct. So, force upon area. Force has upon got the dimensional area. formula mLt to the power minus 2. And area has got the dimension L square. Simplify this, you would get the answer. What is that? M L power minus 1, T power minus 2. Correct. So, which option is correct? Option 2. Yes, option 2. Okay, you work out the formula, you would get the answer as option 2. Okay. Question number 95, moving on to the next one. An electron is accelerated from rest through a potential difference of V volts if the de Broglie wavelength of the electron is 1.22 into 10 power minus 2 nanometers the potential difference is, okay, so what is the potential difference there, ask. So what is the relationship between, uh, you know, potential? 12.24 divided by root V. Yes. Is 12.24 or 1.227? Should be 1.22, no? Relation with D Broglie's wavelength can be written as 1.227 or 1.22 if you are going for approximation on the root V. 
okay in terms of nanometers means you would express it like this then you go for and substitute the value you want to find out what is v go for a rearrangement you need to take square on both the sides yana you want to remove the root so so 1.22 the whole square upon lambda square so substitute the value of lambda and then go for a simplification Ten power four. Yeah, directly that one point two two. You know, one of the values would get cancelled off, and so you would get ten to the power of four. That's it. Only that power of ten would remain. So the answer is ten to the power four. Is it clear? So I hope this question you can approach. Yes, sir. Yeah, this formula you have to remember. Okay, moving on to the next question. Yes, the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor with air as a medium is six microfarad. With the introduction of a dielectric medium, the capacitance becomes thirty microfarad. Okay, that means you introduce a dielectric slab, it becomes thirty. The question is, what is the permittivity of the medium? So you need to find out what is the permittivity. So parallel plate capacitor relationship needs to be used in this case. Okay. So what is the formula for a parallel plate capacitor? C epsilon not a by d. Yeah, epsilon not a upon d. This is without any you know dielectric. So I will take it as C or C not. So this is given as as per the question. This is six microfarad. Okay. This is we. Have, this is what we have. But once you introduce a dielectric, what's going to happen? Capacity is getting enhanced. So the new capacitance is going to be k times whatever the old capacitance is. So k c naught. So your k c naught is going to be thirty microfarad, as per the second statement. Okay. And we need to find out what is the dielectric medium. So divide the uh, relations. I mean both the equations, and you would get the corresponding dielectric medium. Okay. So what is the value of k? Just divide the equations and tell me what is k. You have two equations here in front of you. First one is without dielectric. The second is the second one is when you introduce a dielectric. So what is the value of k, children? Divide the equation. Five, five micro. Correct. Ah ma, you will get thirty upon six, which is five. Correct. So you will get k is equal to five. Once you get k equal to five, you can find out what is the permittivity of the medium. Okay. So for that medium, what is going to be the permittivity? So how can we find that out? So. Corresponding permittivity of the medium can be written as E R is equal to epsilon naught times k. That's it. So epsilon naught value you already it is there here. So substitute the value of epsilon naught eight point eight five into ten to the power minus twelve into value of k which is five. Just we need to multiply this and get the answer. So how much is that turning out to be? Eight point eight five into five. Go for a multiplication. Yeah. How much is eight point eight five times five? Forty four point two five into ten power minus twelve. Yeah. So eight point eight five times five is forty four point two five into ten to the power minus twelve. In significant figures, if you're going to write them as per the given options, if you're going to write, so. You can write it as zero point four four more the decimal places into ten to the power. I think minus ten. Correct. So answer is option one. Option one is your answer. Is it clear? This is how you approach this yes, question. Sir. Question number ninety six. 
Okay. So here we made use of three different formulas. First one is the formula for paddle pit capacitor. Second one is paddle pit capacitor with a dielectric. Then you find out K. Then we use the third formula, relation between the permittivity of a medium with respect to the dielectric. Okay, so ER is equal to E naught times K. So these are the formulas associated for solving this question. Fine, moving to next question, question number 97 here. The solids which have a negative temperature coefficient of resistance are, straightforward question. So which are the solids that have a negative temperature coefficient of resistance? Insulator and semiconductor. Yeah, insulators and semiconductors. Yes, because the resistance is going to, what is the relationship between resistance and temperature? The resistance will decrease as temperatures increase. Mm -hmm. Yes, so the answer is two. The answer is insulators and semiconductors. Good. Next question number 98. For a transistor action, which of the following statements are correct? The base it, region must be very thin and lightly doped. Yes, the base region should be very thin and it has to be lightly doped. Okay. And also you can see that you can you need to note that the junction of the emitter where the emitter is going to be present, that has to be forward or reverse biased? Forward. No, that has to be a reverse bias, not forward. Okay, emitter junction must be reverse biased. Okay. So the answer for this is option two. So these things you should keep in mind. Fine. Question number 99. Yeah. The next question. A screw gauge has a least count of 0 0.01 mm and 50 divisions in its circular scale. What is the pitch of the screw gauge? So how can we calculate the pitch of a screw gauge? Number of divisions be least one. Correct. So, what is it turning out to be? So use the formula for the pitch. Yes. How much? 0.5 millimeters. 0 0.5. First one? Yes, sir. Okay. So every solve solve panning? Number of divisions by least count. Okay. So number of divisions is 50 and least count. So least count is also given in the question. Okay. So you go for substitution, you get the answer as 0 0.5. See here, for least count, if I'm not wrong, so least count formula. In terms of pitch, least count is nothing but pitch upon number of divisions. Yeah, this is the relation which we have. So pitch is nothing but Cross multiply, least count into number of divisions. So, least count is nothing but 0 0.01 mm into number of divisions are 50. So 0 0.01 into 50 would give you 0 0.5. Then, 0.5 mm, isn't it? So, yes, sir. yeah, this is how you do it. So, this formula is very crucial. Okay, yeah. that's why I was asking repeatedly what is the correct you know, relationship. Okay, this is how you do it. Quite simple. Okay, next question. The phase difference between displacement and acceleration of a particle in simple harmonic motion. Okay, what is going to be the phase difference? I repeat, between displacement and acceleration of a particle. So, displacement ka, what is the corresponding relationship? How you find out what is the phase difference between them? Zero. No, it is not zero. So, 
So what is the formula for uh, the displacement of a particle executing simple harmonic motion? Yes, in omega t plus b. So x of t is equal to a sine of omega t. Hmm. Omega t, if you want phase angle also, if you write plus phi, correct. Okay, there's a relationship. Ipo, now acceleration. Now my epic, how do you express uh, the acceleration? Acceleration can be written as dv by dt, correct? Yes, sir. Real dilemma. Correct. Ah, if you differentiate velocity, obviously you would get, um, you know, acceleration. Ana nama get a displacement darke. Velocity ya vandi nama, you know that v is nothing but dx by dt. Correct. Ah. So, if I want to express displacement as a function of time for acceleration. How many times should I differentiate? Once or Two twice? Times. Correct. So, if I go for a double differentiation, I can express displacement as a function of time with respect to acceleration. So, acceleration can be written as d square x upon dt square. This is how I can express because these two relations hold good. Now you go and you know go for a double differentiation. Same only x of t equation on the. If you double differentiate, what would you get? First over what you differentiate panning a. X dash of t kandu putting a. Adhe kapar x double dash of t kandu putting a. So if you do x dash of t, what are you getting? Differentiation of sine is going to be cos, right? So a omega cos omega t over the yes. If you are going for first differentiation, differentiate. Yes, sir. If you yes, go sir. for the third option, sir. Pi r. Ah, correct. Pi is our own. Second differentiation. If you want to apply, then I am going to apply chain rule. Apply. 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 Sin omega t. So ultimately, namak minus a omega square sin omega t varo. If you go for a double differentiation, okay, this is what you get. Fine. So Now, plus cos omega t into omega. Plus. Plus cos omega t. Tirumbi varo ma. U v for you. U v. Well, yeah. Where do you get? Um, Here u v, it's only one function, no. This function only, no. We are writing, isn't it? Minus a omega square sine omega t. Then what? Working. Ah, so now you express the phase angle also. So you can write this as a omega square. If you want to get rid of the negative term, the phase between your displacement and acceleration has to be pi. So ah. A omega square sine of, I can write this as omega t plus pi. So clearly, you can see that the phase angle has to be pi only, not pi by two. It cannot be zero, so it has to be pi only. So the answer, most appropriate answer, is option three. So it has to be pi. Okay, this is how you solve this question. Yes, sir. Yeah. So what are they doing? Next question number one not one. A long solenoid of fifty centimeter length, having hundred turns, carries a current of two point five amperes. So length to put it kanga. Number of turns n to put it kanga. Current also specify panir kanga two point five amperes. The question is, what is the magnetic field at the center of the solenoid? They have given you what is the permeability also. Okay, so use the relationship, and you will have to get me the answers. So in the question, what is the given data? Let us quickly specify it. L is given, fifty centimeters. That's nothing but point five meters. If you go for a conversion, or you can write fifty into ten power minus two, which is ultimately point five. And then number of turns is also given. N is given, hundred turns. N is hundred. Okay. Upon a mind the relationship, na may use panla. 
nu not n i yes okay at the center of the corresponding solenoid so you not n i by 2 if you coming to the center of the solenoid so you will find you will use the relationship mu not n i upon 2 so first mu not n i kandu pudinga adukapram by 2 pannina kuda ungalku answer varum so b is equal to mu not n i what you said is right so use that relationship so substitute the values mu not is 4 pi into 10 to the power minus 7 uh, n when the small n no capital n where where random a or a either kade small n is nothing but number density in solo number of turns per unit length correct huh? number of turns then I'm a question to put the ground per unit length so what is the length the length is 0.5 yeah so you will write it as 100 upon 0.5 okay and current is 2.5 it is simplify pannunga to simplify this what are you getting Six point twenty. This is nothing but two hundred. Hundred upon point five is nothing but two hundred. So you are getting six point correct. Six point twenty-eight into ten power minus four t. Ten to the power minus four Tesla. The Tesla is nothing but the unit of uh, magnetic field. So we can the value one there. Okay. Yeah. So this is the value that we have. This what we have found out is magnetic field inside the solenoid. So you want to find out at, at the uh, center of the solenoid, you again divide it by 2. Okay. So divide this by 2. So you, you would be getting by 2 panning up dinner. Uh, 3.14 into 10 power minus 4. Correct. 3.14 into 10 to the power minus 4 Tesla. So this is the value. So the answer is option 4. Fourth option. Um, Sir, yes. Uh, Sir, uh, Weber would uh, unit specified. Weber? Newton ma kg ms power minus 2 in solderum link and the mari webber kena chirikam. Weber kuvandu you have the relationship for Weber per meter square other than a more tesla and solderum. So, in the other number, one tesla equals one Weber per meter square. Okay, la. so tesla is technically bigger. A bigger unit. Okay. So one Tesla is one Viba per meter square. Sir, Weber can add the copper tenia as unit recon, sir. Weber can you get the be unit as other recon in Pathina? Yes, Iraka. You can express that in terms of um, in, the, in a Solavanga Gauss. So the 10 power 4 Gauss in Koda Yelavanga sometimes. As on the question, you will specify Pandavanga. You need not memorize all this. So, one Weber can be expressed as uh, 10 to the power 4 Gauss. That is, one Tesla is technically 10 power 4 Gauss. Even Weber also, Weber per meter square also. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, these are all the units which are associated. Shall. So, we will now move on to the next question. Question number 1 or 2. A ball is thrown vertically downward with a velocity of 20 meters per second from top of a tower. It hits the ground after some time with a velocity of 80 meters per second. They are asking you to estimate what is the height of the tower. So, how do you calculate what is the tower height? Okay. So, what would you do in this case? So, initial velocity of the ball is given. What is 20? It's nothing but your initial velocity of the ball. That is also specified. 80 would be the final velocity. So whenever you read your question, all the given data, you will have to write it. So U is 20 meters per second and 
B is 80 meters per second. Okay. Acceleration due to gravity, they have asked, already told you to assume. So can't you find out what is the height of the tower? Easy. What kinematic equation would I use in this case? Now I get a U or two. S is equal to ut plus half at square. But now time specify panel. You have to use the equation that is independent of time. There is one equation that u is independent of time. U square plus 2e is. Correct. You know that v square minus u square is equal to 2as. Instead of that, I'll put 2g into s, where s is nothing but the height or the displacement in vector club. So you go for a rearrangement and then you need to find out. Okay. Substitute the values. And then you will have to go for a simplification. So what is S? S is nothing but V square minus U square upon 2G. So 80 squared minus 20 squared upon 2 times 10 is 20. So how much are you getting? Simplify this. Three hundred. Three hundred Yes, sir. Three hundred. Now, the square panni, instead of doing it like that, you can use the maths algebraic identity. A squared minus B square is A plus B into A minus B upon 20. So, you would get 300. Okay, yeah. So, the answer is 300. Option 2. 2. Yeah. Is it clear how to solve this? Fine. So, yes, sir. Yeah. So we will move on to the next one. Question number 103. The color code of the resistance is given below. So based on the color code, you will have to estimate, you have to find out what is the resistance value. Okay. This is from color coding of resistors. So, and then the color one the color and then the code of the curriculum you have to uh, identify. So you can see the strips from left to right. There are four strips, yellow, violet, brown, and gold. So for yellow, what is the color? For violet, what is the color? Brown and gold. This is a four band resistor. So for a four uh, you know, band resistor, again, you will have to know how to find out what is the tolerance. Option two. Option two. Option two, okay. So for, you have to put option 2 of dinner. Sir, yellow denotes 4, violet denotes 7, brown denotes 0, sir. Okay. Yellow, yellow denotes 4, violet denotes 7, brown denotes? Yeah. 0. Brown denotes 0. Okay. Gold? 5 percentage. 5 percentage. Tolerance. Gold, tolerance. Gold, silver, all the tolerance band. Okay, yes. That's it. So, you are going to express it as the, the color code of the resistor. So, tolerance is plus or minus. So, therefore, 5%, yes, 5% is there in all, in most of the options. So, 4, 7, 0. Now, whether it is kilo or whether it is, you know, ohms, well, again, you will have to be careful there. So, because here, here do you get kilo? This is A in which B in which the C in which tolerance. General formula, generalize panna, I can write this as AB into 10 to the power C plus or minus tolerance. Okay, la, it is a general formula. Me, for textbook, la, na, they would have specified like this. So, A is representing yellow, so 4. B is representing violet, 7 into 10 to the power C. Okay. So, here, 10 to the power C, I think brown cannot be 0. Let me just check. Brown has to represent uh, 1 and 0 or chance. Illa. Okay. Black is zero. Ah, black is zero. Then I use it. brown zero. Bina ten power zero one lag It's not matching. So brown has to be one. Okay. So into ten to the power one 
plus or minus gold. Gold one the five percent. Okay, gla. Instead of gold silver, cut through that. Abdi na ten percent pour wing. Ah, color ei illa abdi na twenty percent. So that one the you have to keep in mind. Okay. So if the one the you cut the color chis interfere panning ke na you will get four seventy plus or minus five percent. So four seventy ohms da. So therefore it is option two. Okay. So second option is correct. Purun jodi gla. This is the formula. This is how you. Approach color coding questions. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Yeah. So, so yeah, but ten percent is used for me. Silver could turn down, na. Instead of gold, you would put ten percent. Okay. okay. Suppose tolerance band is illa. There is, I mean, tolerance band. When the color is illa, abdi na, you will take it as twenty percent. Okay. So on these okay. things, you can keep in mind. Sherry, we move on to the next question. Question number one hundred four. The Brewster's angle IB for an interface should be. What is the condition for Brewster's angle? First option, sir, forty-five degree. Hmm, forty-five degree should be less than the Brewster's Brewster's angle again less than ninety degree. Is it so? Correct. That is the condition for Brewster's angle. It has to lie between forty-five to ninety degrees. That's correct. Okay, it cannot be ninety. So other options are ruled out. It has to be between between forty five and ninety. What is the uh, formula for that Brewster's angle? Do you remember? Tan I P is equal to n. Correct. Okay. Good. So next question, question number one hundred five. Can one of you read? I'll just drink water. Yeah. Read question number one hundred five. A ray is incident at an angle of incidence i on one surface of a small angle prism with angle of prism a and emerges normally from the opposite surface. If the refractive index of the material of the prism is mu, then the angle of incidence is nearly equal. Okay, so what is the angle of incidence nearly equal? To? Again, now what is the given data? You write down. Try to represent this question also. If you are able to illustrate, well and good. Just try this. We'll see. I'll help you. So what's happening? A ray is incident at an angle of incidence i on the prism. So try to represent it. So over a particular angle, it is incident. So it is entering the prism like this. After all, at that point, what would you do? You will show the normal. Yeah, that is a general practice that we do. So draw the normal. At that point, imagine the blue line is your normal. The angle of incidence i have been shown here. Kanga. <coughs> You know that when light ray is going to enter the prism, it enters from rarer to denser. Obviously, it is going to bend towards the normal. So, bend again, it is going. Okay, it is moving. So, for small angle prism, I have been showing you that. Okay, and it emerges normally from the opposite surface. Its refractive index of the metal of the prism is mu. Then, what is the angle of incidence? Nearly equal to in this case. Okay, as per as this. So angle of prism, you know that it is y. The representation they have given. So this one the y. Okay. So this after it emerges out, so they are saying it is emerging out normally. Other than near it is coming out, such that it makes an angle of 90 degrees with the surface of the prism from which it is emerging out. So this angle is going to be 90 degrees. That's what is information we have. Okay. So once you have all this information, so you need to find out what is the angle of incidence. So 
So, this is 90, na, this is 90. Da. Correct? Ha? On that side of the prism. These two are 90. Then what would be this angle? It makes a small triangle inside, you can see. So, this is the angle. Here is 90 degrees. Irukku. So, obviously, this has to be angle sum property use funding. Na, you will get that as 90 minus a, 90 minus theta on the application. Okay. So, this angle is going to be 90 minus a. Okay. That is what we get. <coughs> so, incident ray one day, if it is emerging out normally from the other surface, so what is your angle of emergence? going to be 0, isn't it? Hello, you guys are there? Yes, sir. Yes, so it will be 0. So, angle of deviation the relationship when you go to Try to bring in that relationship. Okay. For a small angle prism, so how can we express the angle of deviation? Delta Yes, nigga present derivation panamodo obviously you would have learned. Delta is nothing but mu minus mu one minus times a. Go for a rearrangement. Your sum of the angles has to be equal. So delta plus a is equal to i plus e. Angle of incidence plus angle of emergence. Two, we are trying to get a relationship. Sum of the angle of your prism and angle of deviation of the prism should be equal to the sum of the angle of incidence and angle of emergence. Okay. So, angle, angular concept we are bringing in. So, here we can go and substitute the values. So, in the place of angle of deviation, I am substituting mu minus 1 times a. So, substitute pandra mu minus 1 into a plus a plus i, I mean, is equal to i plus 0. Your know, angle of emergence is 0 because it emerges out normally. Simplify pannanga. I am getting mu a minus a plus a is equal to i. So, minus a plus a is going to get cancelled out and you get i is equal to mu a. So, this is how I build the relationship. Okay. So, angle of incidence is nothing but mu into a. So, answer is option 1. So, you have to bring the relationship for this given situation. So, prism diagram represent panita. Then you bring the relation with respect to the angles of the prism. Your how it is emerging out plus what is the relation with that with the angle of incidence. Your angle of emergence is 0. I told you first itself, that's because it is emerging out normally. So, therefore, there is, that is going to be 0. And then I am using this relationship. Delta plus A is equal to I plus E. Okay. Yes, so sir. This we are using. So, either when the exterior, some of the exterior angles should be equal to some of that corresponding interior angles. And the relationship that I am going to use. So, if you know that, this question is going to be easy to solve. So, under that approach is what is used. Okay. Fine. So, this is question, how you solve question number 105. Then, okay. Yeah. Next question number 106. You can uh, read the question. So, we have two cylinders A and B of equal capacity they are connected to each other via a stop cock A is containing an ideal gas at standard temperature and pressure and B is completely evacuated the entire system is thermally insulated then the stop cock is suddenly open what is the process adiabatic Adiabatic process, okay. Why is it adiabatic process? Mm -hmm. 
thermally insulated abin solirukanga correct so thermally insulated system means you know that there is no exchange of heat as well as energy no ma okay they itself have mentioned very clearly okay so entire system is uh, insulated so it will allow expansion so as a result it will maintain its same temperature so therefore what's going to happen in this case it's going to be a adiabatic process because there is no transmission of heat or any substance that is mass between the system and the surroundings so therefore it is adiabatic adiabatic is the most appropriate answer okay fine next question number 107 for which of the following bohr model is not valid single ionized neon atom okay for single ionized neon why for single ionized neon multi electron system the bohr atom model not applicable correct we cannot apply apply it very good okay question number 108 two bodies of mass 4 and 6 kg ninga question ye paakala they have represented using a diagram they are tied to a end of a massless string the string is passing over a pulley which is frictionless the acceleration of the system in terms of acceleration due to gravity is idu kuda easy da laws of motion application just by seeing the figure itself you can write the equation yes So what is the expression in this case? Tension one day is same because it is the same string of being written. Alla same tension only is going to act, and you know that mg will act downwards. If you are simplifying it, then you can get the acceleration expression. Okay. Question number one hundred eight. Question number one hundred eight. So what would be the expression for the acceleration? Equate the tensions in both the cases. For both the blocks individually, free body diagram. You are putting here, na. Hmm. Option two, sir, G by ten. Option two, G by ten. How are you getting G by ten? Forty minus T equal to four. Ye first equation. Hmm. Second equation, sixty minus T equal to six. Ye. Okay. First equation, when the you are getting forty minus t equal to four e. Forty minus t is equal to four e. But t minus forty then avaro because that is acting downward, illa. We have to go for a sign convention. Wasn't it? Okay, sir. Ah, my expression. Let them both. Then, T is acting vertically upward. So T minus forty is equal to four y. This is correct. Same. This is for the first four kg block. Next to six kg block. Adhiku vandhi you will write sixty minus T. Sixty minus T. Six y. Is equal to six here. Then go for a simplification. Okay. Then you go for simplification. I mean, render tension zone. You go and the equate. Pan no. So I can write four a plus forty is equal to sixty minus six a. Okay. Club all the terms on one side. So you will get ten a is equal to. Twenty in varo. 
you get it as 20 right yes sir then a is equal to 20 so a is equal to 20 upon 10 2. so in terms of g in Aladigina, you will get it as 2g upon 10 okay so which is nothing but g by 5 Okay. So this is the answer. Answer is G by 5 or G upon 5. So option 1. Okay. Simple. So this is how you express it. This is how you find, uh, you solve this question. Okay. Class. Question number 108. So next question, question number 109. Okay. So in a certain region of space with a volume of 0 0.2 meter cube, the electric potential is found to be 5 volt throughout. What is the magnitude of electric field in this region? So what can be, what formula can be used to solve this? EV. So, we have to do the volume. That's the problem. That's the problem. E is equal to minus dv by dr. That is the formula we, we already learned. This is the formula. They're asking what is magnitude of electric field? What would be the electric field? Is there any change in potential? No, sir. Huh. We're saying potential is always, it is 5 uh, volt throughout. So, equipotential surface madri That means there is no change in potential. When there is no change in potential, could you have electric field? No, sir. Zero. So, what is electric field? It is going to be zero. Okay, Angla. So, we should be careful for such questions. Because they say electric, uh, your electric potential is constant, or it is just 5 volt throughout. That is the meaning. <coughs> okay, and hence the electric field component has to be zero. I mean, magnitude of electric field would be zero. Is that clear? So, yes, moving sir. on to the next one. Yeah, question number 110. So, they have given you a uranium isotope that is 235. When uranium-235 is bombarded with a neutron, it is generating krypton-89. So, three uh, and three neutrons and what else is a question. So, you must find out what is being given out. So, the nuclear fission reaction needs to be expressed. Option 3, sir. Okay, 3. Correct, it's 3, da. So, how do you get option 3? So, they are bombarding it with a neutron. So, you have to write the energy. Hmm. Sir, U92, in the 36... Ah. 36 on the thing, 92 minus 36, 56. Correct. Okay. So, 36, 92 minus 36, you go for a rearrangement, LHS side or RHS side, you equate pannanga, all of them. So, when you equate it, you will get the expression. So, it is 56. So, 56 when the atomic, uh, it is now the uh, number, right, of barium. So, already it is there. So, the option 3 now is matching with 56. Okay. Simple. 144, how do you verify it is 144? 56 only 144. Again, the sum of the atomic mass numbers on both the sides. Isn't it? So 236, so you would get it as 236 yen because you consider that neutron uh, also. That will also have a unit mass. So 236 minus 92. 
okay that would give you 144 apdi da the 144 vanduch okay so that is the reason option 3 is correct fine easy only you can directly you relate the mass numbers and then find out this also simple question number 111 the energy equivalent to 0.5 grams of a substance so how can we find out what is the energy equivalent to 0.5 grams of a substance so what can we use which formula the form einstein's famous equation தெரியும் Okay, before that, 0.5 grams and kilograms will be converted. After you convert, you go for a substitution. Okay, once you have converted, what would you get? You can write 0.5 grams as 5 into 10 to the power minus 4 kg into C square. 4.5 so, and 10 to the power 16. So 4.5 into 10 to power 13. Amma. So 4.5 into 10 to power 13. Okay. Uh, significant figure itself you have told. Correct. So answer is option. 4. Four. Fourth one is the option. Simple. Okay. So we use this relation and we find out. Is it clear? So moving on. The next question from kinetic theory. The mean free path for a gas with molecular diameter T and number density N can be expressed as. So what is the correct expression? Option 3, sir. Option 3. 1 upon 2 under root 2n pi d. No, I don't think so. It's not option 2. So, mean free path relation path in here. You mathematically express it as mean free path is expressed as kt times root of 2n pi d squared with the relation. So if you are going to express proportionately, so it can be proportional to, I remove the proportionality signs, all I mean constants and I add it up in a 1 upon root 2n pi d square so it, this is how it looks okay when you express when you proportionately express it so which are the terms that is exactly the same as 1 upon root 2 n pi d square 4 okay yeah so it's option 4 in this case so 4 is the correct option so this one you will have to remember you have a k is nothing but your boltzmann constant t is the thermodynamic temperature so n is number of moles okay so this is what is the relationship so you you remember the formula this is very simple so formula based okay moving on to the next part yeah could you please read the question one of you a wire of length l area of cross section a is hanging from a fixed support 
the length of the wire changes to L1 when mass m is suspended from its free end. The expression for Young's modulus is. Yes. So, what would be be the expression for Young's modulus? Okay. So, when you suspend the wire, obviously you know the forces that are going to act on the wire. Okay. So, it is a hanging wire. So, what's going to happen to that wire? Option four, sir. Option four. Okay. Okay. We'll check on that. Yeah. So, the relationship for Young's modulus. What's Young's modulus formula? Y is equal to half into half into. इल्लिए half इल्ला बरा दे. Normal Young's modulus. What is the relationship? Change in length by origin. So, stress stress by strain. So that relationship you go with. So strain is nothing but your change in dimension upon original dimension. Other than English change in strain, na other than that is the meaning. Now, all the reciprocal and all the other part, you would be getting. So force into length divided by area into change in length. Now this is what you get, isn't it? Now when the wire is being hanged, you can see that the force that is responsible. downwards is going to be your gravity force due to gravity so f is going to be equal to mg because the wire is hanged okay so as the wire is hanging simple so i go and substitute that value so i would get f, y is equal to force mg potter gram into l divided by area Change in length. Question like L one could take anger. Another couple of it is so change in length is nothing but final length minus original length, which is L one minus L. Okay, ask for the question. Simple. So what is the answer? So y is equal to m g L upon a times L one minus L. So which is option the correct answer? Yeah, option. option. It is option. சரிங்களா இந்த மாதிரி தான் யூ வட் அப்ரோச் திஸ் क्वेश्चन ஓகே சிம்பிள் சோ திஸ் இஸ் ஹவ் யூ டு இட் டோன்ட் ஜம்ப் டு கன்க்ளூஷன்ஸ் ரைட் தி எக்ஸ்பிரஷன் கரெக்ட்லி தென் ட்ரை டு அனலைஸ் தி சிச்சுவேஷன் அண்ட் தென் கோ ஃபார் a கன்க்ளூஷன் ஓகே and i i remember somebody you know telling for option 4 okay so answer is option 2 fine so moving on to the next question i hope this part is clear question number 113 shall we move on to the next one yes sir yes okay question number 114 a spherical conductor of radius 10 cm has a charge of 3.2 times 10 power minus 7 coulombs distributed uniformly what is the magnitude of electric field at a point 15 cm from the center of the sphere so at a distance of 15 you must find out what is the magnitude so what would you do dipole axial line only axial line of dipole inge inge vandhudu electric field they are asking e is equal to kq by r square then eh That's it. Why do you go for di, you know, dipole? It's not a dipole that we are dealing with. It's spherical conductor. Okay. So whenever you have a spherical conductor and you have a charge at the center, at distance you are trying to find out. How all of that. So K Q by R square is the relationship that you intend to use. Okay. So substitute pananga the values. K is nine into ten power nine. Q is 3.2 into 10 to the power minus 7 divided by R square, 10 centimeters. 10 or 15? Ah, oh, 15 centimeters. Zero point. Hmm. Zero point zero two two five. 
ओके इन टर्म्स ऑफ मीटर्स करेक्ट सिंप्लीफाई दिस इट दिस नीड्स टू बी सिंप्लीफाइड ओके वंस यू सिंप्लीफाई दिस यू वुड गेट द आंसर सो हाउ मच इज इट टर्निंग आउट टू बी 1.28 electric field has got the units Newton per coulomb. So the answer is option. Fourth option. The fourth option. Okay, into 10 to the power. Yes. So this is how you approach this question. Okay. Good. Okay. The energy required to break one bond in DNA is 10 to the power minus 12 joules. Now the value in electron volt is equal to. How would you convert joules to electron volts? One electron volt equal to 1.6 into 10 power minus 18. Six. Ah, all that. Nineteen. Ah, that means you have to express. Okay, and the 10 power minus 20. That means you express pondering in terms of electron volt. Ah, all that. So if you express an electron volt, what is the answer? As you rightly said, one electron volt is technically 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 joules. So you express 10 to the power minus 20 joules in terms of electron volt. So what would you do? You go for a division, right? Divided by 1.6. 10 to the power minus 20 divided by 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19. So this needs to be simplified. How much are you getting? 0.06. So 10 power minus 1 times upon 1.6, which is 0 0.06. Okay. Yes. Electron volt. So the answer is 0 0.06 electron volt. So option is option 1. First option. That's how you approach this question. Fine. Okay. Moving on to the next one. Question number 116. Yeah. A body weighs 72 newtons on the surface of the earth. What is the gravitation force on it at a height equal to half the radius of the earth? So again, you have to go for again. You have to go for a relationship. Yes, somebody was telling the answer. I guess thirty-two newton. Correct. Thirty-two newton is correct. Yes, already approach it. Thirty-two is correct. So first, find out the mass. Okay, as per the given question, force is given. That is newtons. They have given weight. They have given. So, W is equal to mg, use a relationship, find out m, okay, you divide by 10, you would get it, which is 7.2 kg, right? Once you got the mass, then you find out what is the acceleration due to gravity at a certain height, you use that relationship, okay? So, you have to find out what is the acceleration due to gravity at a certain height above the surface, so you use the relationship G is equal to G H is equal to G R square E by R hmm. E plus H square. Correct. Which is nothing but 1 upon, I mean G upon 1 plus H upon R, the whole square. So H is nothing but R by 2. As per the given uh, situation. If you put R by 2, you would get that as 1 by 2. Okay. R R would get cancelled off and you would get 1 by 2. So, it is g upon 1 plus 1 by 2, the whole square, which is nothing but 4, 4 by 9 g in varo. It is empty way panning Okay. So, 4 by 9 g is nothing but 4.44 meters per second square. Okay. 
So that is your value of once you have got g, can't you find out what is the force? M into g, which is 7.2 kgs into 4.44. How much is that turning out to be? You would get this as um, let me calculate 31.9. Seven, which is approximately thirty-two. Okay, that's the reason the answer is thirty-two newtons. Is it clear? This is how you approach this question. Fine. Yes, sir. Yeah. So in the Mari questions, you know, are very uh, important gravity-related questions. So like this, you have so many you know types of questions which are there. Okay. Fine. So. Um, we're almost done for today, so I think we'll wind up. Okay, here. Yeah. So we'll, you know, do the questions <coughs> tomorrow. I'm having another lecture also today. Yeah, fine. I think I'm plus there. So same thing. I will send you children, and this, you know, physics part. I will crop it and send it, so you can practice these questions. We'll continue in the next class. That is tomorrow. Okay, so keep practicing. So stay tuned. Yes, sir. Thank yeah. you. Sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. All the best, children. Do well. Okay, for your exam. Okay. Anyways, one more day is there, so we are going to meet again. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yes. Welcome. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, welcome.